Hi everybody, welcome along. Thanks for tuning in. That's what I always say. Um, yes, it is me. Beard is gone, hair's been cut, head's still shiny, still fat, still wearing glasses. Never mind, eh? Um, review for you today. Uh, if you remember, I did the. Um, sorry, I always do this for you. Today is Friday, January the 11th, 2019. Um, you remember I did a review a couple of days ago on the Tacom Fry's Crown, the crane with the Panther Tank Lucky Dip box edition. Um, I ended up with the Aus D with full Zimmer it. So I thought I'd do a quick review of that for you. Um, so you will get to see what you what you get for your money if you want to buy that kit. Um, before you start watching this, please bear in mind I know nothing about the Panther Tank other than it's a tractor vehicle with sloping armour and a turret and a gun. So if there are errors in this kit, like it's got the wrong tracks or the wrong wheels or the Zimmerit pattern's awful or, you know, the engine's not right or there's something wrong with it, um, I won't know that. Okay, so please tell me in the comments, but please don't hammer me for not knowing what the real thing should like look like. I'm going to do an inbox review of the kit and see what it's like, how, how crisp it is, how how um, how sharp it is, are there any mould seams, is, is it covered in ejector pin marks, you know, and just stuff like that. So um, let's get to the, uh, to the bench and have a look inside the box. Okay, so here we go, here's the box again, um, all glossy and shiny. Uh, and this was the Fries Crown, Strabble Crown and Panzer Auth question mark and I've got this one the D late production with Zimmeret it's got number 131 on it which is interesting isn't that the number on the tank at Bovington um so yeah so there we go we've got the uh on the side of the box we've got the full interior kit so it's got all of this in there fully detailed engine and everything and um yeah this is the one this is the one I've got here so um Let's have a look inside this box. Now I've taken the sprues and everything for the crane out. Um, and you can see, I mean, this is this box is very big. It's um it was 150 mil deep. So you can see it's it's quite a big old box and it's you know it's pretty packed with plastic, even with the crane taken out. So uh so let's get all these bags out of the way because we're not gonna definitely with wrinkly bags, and um we'll have a look through the um have a look through the sprues. Okay, so here we are at the bench. Uh, I've got all the sprues out of the bags, and unbelievably, there's 25 sprues in this kit. Um, there's only a couple that are repeated as well, so um, yes, yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be quite a build. I could imagine it would be quite a mojo breaker, and would probably have to be a, a fairly long project, uh, something you do in between other kits, perhaps. Um, but then I say that all the time because that's what I do. I can't just build one kit. I just have four. So let's have a start by looking at the hull and the turret. So um, as we said there, they're Zimmerit coated. You can see the size of them there compared to my hand. And we can see that the hull is 150, it's about 190 millimeters long. So that gives you an idea of size. So yeah, it's a, it's a one piece model. We've got two injection points there. So that's where the plastic would have been injected into the mold. Um, and we can also see it's extremely flimsy, so it's probably very, uh, very scale-like on its um, armour thickness. I'm afraid I've picked up a bit of a cough, so you're going to see me stop and start a lot, so I don't have to edit out the coughs when I'm actually doing the editing, like just there. Uh, so, um, yeah, we've got some of those great, straight away we're into these great big uh, Z-pin, um, ejector pin marks here that need to be broken out. Some quite big ejector pin marks on the inside. Um, but we've actually got, I mean, I've never seen this before, we've got actual roof detail on the inside of the uh, on the inside of the tank. And then we've got the Zimmerit here, which is which is a very unusual pattern. Um, one of my more active subscribers, shall we say, who comments a lot is Darren, Darren Hedges. Um, he uh, seems very knowledgeable on them. Um, on German armor so no doubt he'll come back and tell me what this is all about but it's certainly um, that's nothing like Zimmer I've seen before <laughs> so perhaps somebody could tell me I mean this is probably slapped on in the field um, and then it's been given a cross hatch pattern 
Uh, why would they have done that? I guess it's to make it break off in pieces rather than a whole lump. So, um, yeah, without looking up any history on that, I'm not even sure what period this is. But there's no Zimmer only and no horizontal surfaces, only on the uh, sloped armour. So, yeah, very nice. And then the turret. Again, we've got some lovely detail on the inside, kind of ejector pin marks, but not really too much of an issue. It's on the top, so you're not going to see it. Um, again, we've got that unusual Zimmerit pattern there. Um, yeah, all in all, very, very nice, very crisp. Nice, um, that's a lovely, you can see the texture on the surface there. It's very, very nice. I assume the hull had the same sort of texture on it, yeah. You got those two injection pin marks, injection injection marks there to to get rid of. It should be too difficult. Scrape them off with a knife, and then um, and then just go over with some Tamiya extra thin, and that will uh, blend the um, the the you know the, the mark you left. That'll blend that into the outer surrounding form. Now these sprues, I'm going to be showing you the order they came out because I want to put them back in their bags. So I've got the sprues and the bags all in the same order. So um. So I'm, I'm afraid they weren't following in logical order. This is obviously, as you can see here, sprue B. And this is all the shells that go inside the uh, tank. Um, so there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, so there's 96 shells there and um, they're nicely molded not too much of a mold seam yes I call it a mold seam not burring I don't know where the term burring came from but I don't agree that it's correct but uh, yeah and it's also nice to see that there's a nice mold match as well because sometimes you see with like where you've got these lines going around sometimes you see mold mismatch so you end up with, on the join, you end up with this instead of having them directly in line. You can see there, they're all pretty good between the two halves of the mould. So they're nice. And then we've got what looks like the engine sprue. Um, looks very, very detailed. It's obviously going to be generic for, for most of their tank models. I believe this is going to be a Maybach uh, V12. So... Um, so it'll probably be the same engine that goes in the Tiger and everything. Um, I'm sure somebody will tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> but we've got the, uh, I believe that's the air filter there, the air filter, air intakes. And then we've got the block halves, inlet manifold. All very nice, all very crisp. Front of the block, or back of the block, front or back of the block there. Nice flywheel detail on there. Really nice. Um... What else was interesting? I can't spend too long on each sprue. It'll be here all night. We've got the rocker covers there, or cam covers. If so, if I can. I doubt that it was. But yeah, lovely. There's some little greeblies there with some lovely crisp detail. No flash, no damaged parts. Nice to see they're using these ejector tabs so you're not getting ejection pin marks on everything. All very nice. Then we've got, this is some interior parts I know, these are the um, torsion spring bearings, they run down the middle of the floor, or either side of the centre of the floor, these are the air intakes, uh, we've got some control equipment there, is that fuel tanks, um, I think that's part of the turret there is it, but all, um, all very nice, all very clean, all very crisp. Those filters are slide moulded by the look of it, so you've got, is there any vent detail on there? No, you've got them, um, you've got detail there and detail there and they're just smooth on the backs. We've got one of the uh, hull cross members here, um, is it radio gear or whatever that is, it looks like radio gear. Of course some of this might not be used, you've got some lovely... Um, correct pattern on there the the not not checker plate but diamond plate which is really nice and the same on there i'm guessing this is the um floor of the hull and then the turret basket will be in here uh 
screw you. I'm not sure what that is. Is that side armor? This looks like um radiator. That's the uh that's the um top front of the hull. You've got the driver driver's hatch there. Uh, there's that air filter cover by the look of it. We've got some vents here. Be interested to see what the fans are like. Got some tools, shovel axe. Um yeah. Show you those vents there, they're all nice and crisp and clean. No flash, no uh no cleanup required on them at all. Look, lovely, ready to go straight on. Um I'm not sure what these are, I think these are side armor, aren't they, perhaps? But uh but they've got the um the beveled edge to give it the, the thin look on the edge. They're very nice plastic as well. Nice um cast finish on the top of that cover there. Yeah, lovely. All in all, lovely looking kit. Uh, so we've got our whole floor here. So it's a, you make the hull up. You don't. Um, it's not just a tub, which I like. Um, so you've got the underside of the hull there, and they've even got the um, cold rolled steel or hot rolled steel finish on there, which is nice. Um, rear panel. Is that a rear panel or is that an internal bulkhead? I'm not sure. It's probably a rear panel because it's got armour on it. Very nice. Very crisp, very clean. A few ejector pin marks on here but it looks like they're going to be hidden and they are very, very slightly raised which is nice. So quick rubber the sand and stick and they'll be gone. Sprue R. Oh, sprue R and sprue Q. Again, this looks like more internal, so it's probably quite generic across the uh, the different um, different models. But again, we can see a multitude of ejector pins on here. Uh, we've got some small shells there by the look of it, is it? Some control equipment. Just walk you around the sprue is the easiest, I think. Um, and over here we've got the same again, we've got some uh, tiny detail parts here. A little bit of detail on that column or shaft or whatever it is, really nice. Just flip it over for the other side, get away from those ejector pin marks. And we've got some, I know, is that leather boots or something around there? So it's something that's um, flexible anyway. And then our storage racks. All in all. Lovely, all crisp and clean and nice. Got some more hull parts. That's the size of the engine bay there. So you've got detail on both sides of the engine bay. Another cover there. I mean, there's going to be a lot of generic parts in here that you don't use. But I'm not sure. I'm looking at the instructions in a minute, but I'm not sure. I don't think Tacom, something that Tacom don't do is they don't, they'll sort of say, you know, um, use this hatch or this hatch, but they don't tell you which version it's for. So, you know, like Tammy will say version A, B and C in the instructions at the end. Um, and one might be, you know, from Bastoy, one might be from D-Day, one might be from something else. And they'll call them A, B and C. But with Tacom, they just say, you know, here's the option, use either one of these guns. But they don't tell you which ones are which, you've got to do your research. Um, here we go again with this mouldy. See, they've got this the right way around on this one. This looks like some sort of vent covers, and they've so you don't damage the cast finish. They've put the sprue nib on the back side, which they did. I wish they'd done that on the others. We've got exhaust there with slight hollowing. I'll need proper cleaning out. Um, but yeah, it's all all in all, lovely detail. Uh, this looks like some different cupola parts here. I can't think. I can't say these are going to be all the, the same. So you're going to have a lot of optional bits there by the look of it. Um, this looks like part of the turret. Looks like it's the turret base actually. So the turret will sit on top of there, um, or the turret outer, should I say? And then we've got our. Looks like periscopes. Is that there? Some nice detail on there, whatever that is. Mantlet. There's one, I noticed there's two different sprues of wheels. So this is one of the, you get two of these. Um, this is sprue A3, I'm guessing. But 
lovely detail on those, very, very crisp. Nice, um, nice steel finish on those wheels as well. Very nice. The same there. Not sure are these steel wheels or are they tired? I'm assuming they're steel. And then we've got some more turret parts here. There's a couple of different mantlets there. Um, part of the plating. This is the, the ring gear and our gun barrel. Just moulded in one piece, which is nice. We just have a seam to remove on there. So not much of a seam at all. Um, Lovely moulding on that ring gear, gear that turns the turret. Uh, mantlets there. Um, we've got the um, barrel lock, the barrel stud, you should have called it there. It's just beautifully detailed. You've got an open and a closed one. It's nice to see they've got the chain in a natural hanging position rather than sort of in a, a perfect position. All very nice. We've got some machine guns there. I'm not sure what they are. 15s or 51s is it or whatever so yeah no mold mismatch again not much of a mold seem to clean up and here we've got some this is J2 and F2 and we've got some eyelets here for the end of the uh, ropes jacks there's three jacks here you're gonna this kit is gonna fill your spares box up there's a lot of um, multiple parts, so I don't know if you could actually build something else out of this if you if you're just restricted to a D, but not knowing much about it, I don't even know what the difference is between a D and an A. But um, yeah, I want to get a uh, Berg Panther, but I want the A. And um, as I say, Darren Hedges, who seems to know a lot about this stuff, he's he's uh, suggested I wait for the Ryfield one. Apparently, the Ryfield Panther is um, one of the best kits on the market at the moment nice detail on those um wire cutters there cable cutters should i say this is one thing i saw in the kit that i don't like link and length tracks you know um very itinerary very uh i don't know i wish they hadn't done this so you got the i suppose it's just the bottom run which is um in the length we got that those bits on the top as well but um Nice detail on the tracks, but I think uh, if you're going to go to all the trouble of building this kit and all that trouble of putting that beautiful interior in it, you ain't going to stick these on there. I mean, there's no there's no ejector pin marks on there, which is good, but I mean, look at it, it's just so bloody, I don't know, just... Ugh. And then you've got the guide horns there, which are drilled through, and you've got to obviously cut these off the sprue and fit them into... Um, so you've got two per track link, so that'd be nice. I think that'll be for all on them. If I build it, I may just sell it. So we've got another interior sprue here. So we've got our filters with our um, fans, should I say. Uh, this looks like some brake, rear brake enclosures where they use the brakes to do the steering. Um, not sure what this is here, but it's nicely moulded. All very nice. That's the uh, gearbox cover that goes inside the tank, next to the driver. Not sure how accurate that is. But, uh, yeah, some nice crisp clean moulding. That's your um, conduit that goes on the floor there. Then we've got the sprue E, which is uh, which has got all our... Um, Got some drive shafts on it and some more transmission parts and pedals and levers hoses some nice detail on those levers on the ends lovely detail on those um hubs whatever they are real nice really nice yeah it's um it's good <laughs> It's, uh, it's very nice. As I say, it may be totally inaccurate, but the detail looks nice. The detail that's there. And I've got more turret and gun parts by the look of it. It's a very busy sprue, this one. Um, so this looks like it's the bottom of the turret basket. 
and if that's what you call it, the bit you know what I mean, the bit you stand in that the turret goes round on. Um, we've got the gun breech there. Really, really sharp, really crisp, really nice. If I just walk you around the sprue, there's just too much to talk about on here. There's bloody loads of it. It's absolutely plastered in plastic. Lots and lots of parts. And it's going to keep you very, very busy. Some quite large eject um, sprue nibs. Sprue gates, should I say. When does a gate become a nib? Because it's a gate until you cut it off, I think, and then it's a sprue nib, isn't it? <laughs> nice, um, nice diamond pattern on that floor. Lovely. We've got our sprocket sprue and our torsion springs. I'm not sure if it's got working suspension, this one. I'm not sure if, it, this is, if it's like the main kit. You buy the main kit, don't you? And then you can have like... 15 different options you have different gun barrel and different springs and different tracks and different wheels can't you i don't, I don't know um this is yeah this is all the uh suspension arms We've got our sprockets here nice to see they got the sprue connector points on the outside of the gears nice detail on there not sure if it's correct I'm sure somebody will tell me All very nice, all suspension parts, suspension arms. Tiny little bits there, whatever they are. And then we've got our torsion springs with their uh, with their mounts. There's the back of the sprockets. All the detail in there, all the detail you could ever want, if it's correct. Another sprue of wheels, K2, the last one was um, A3, wasn't it? So you can see there we've got the, the Panther fans, I know exactly what all these wheels are for and where they all go. There we go. I'm sure they're steel. We'll have a look in a minute. Getting near the end now. This is the... Um, Hull spruce, we've got the sides here. Uh, what's this? This is the, I'm guessing that's the tops. That's the sort of, the mud guards as it were, the, the um, defenders that go over the tracks. We've got another rear panel there, or is that, that's an internal bulkhead, that one, isn't it? Yeah, so, um, got the detail there on the outside of the hull sides, which is all nice, all lovely crisp and everything, and get hidden up by all those wheels. And then we've got the inside there, which is uh, very busy, very, very nice. Some of that fuel tanks there, oil tanks or something. We've got those um, engine covers at the back, exhaust, armour, armour plate for the top. Lovely, really, really nice. Internal hatch detail there, look. Shame has got a jetter pin right in the middle of it, but there we go. And the last sprue, we've got a mantle which is going to fall off. Um, got some parts here which have got more uh, more of that funny zimmer on, and then we've got another rear panel here which has got more of that zimmer on. We can see we've got this mantle sticking out the side here, which again is zimmer coated. So this is obviously going to be the dedicated house for D sprue. So yeah, you're going to end up with a lot of spare parts. I'm not sure if you're going to get as many as you do in a dragon kit, but uh, you're going to get a lot. <laughs> There's lots of uh, lots of zimmer coated parts there. And then last but not least, we've got these two here. I won't bother taking them apart. These are your... Um, jigs to build your Lincoln Link tracks on so um yeah I don't think we'll be using them if I build this kit and go to all the trouble that interior I think I'll go out and let me get some frules for it or some master club or something so um yeah there we go there's all the plastic so that's that done let's have a look at the instructions all right moving on we've got the um decals here so we've got a 
if I'm looking at the number on the bottom here, it's um, 03042097A. So I'm assuming this is a generic um, decal sheet for all of the Panthers because this kit is actually 2104. So a little bit of crease damage there, but that won't matter. Um, so we've got these white, I don't know what they're saying. And then we've got all these red things here. I'm guessing they're for the weapons. And then we've got some generic um, clocks and stencils and stuff, no doubt for the interior of the tank. So uh, yeah, very nice. All in register, all pretty sharp. Lots of carrot film, but they're usually tacking. I, I like tacking decals, they're quite nice. Um, and then this is the one two one zero four, which is generic, which is for this kit. So we've got one three one two three five three one four, um, and some uh, German crosses there. So nothing much to write home about, but um, yeah, three two five there in white. Little sheet of photo actually. I won't bother getting it out. It's just some um, some little mesh grills, but it's nice to see that instead of just printing a flat mesh, they've actually got the interwoven wire look to it. So that's really nice. Get some denting on that, and crease it up a bit, make it look worn out. Which is lovely. And then we've got this thing here, which is um, like a floppy piece of vinyl. Um, I can only assume that is an engineering tape or something. Um, but if my experience is correct, you have to be a little bit careful with this because I built one of those 12 scale Martini Porsches and they had the flexible ducting on the front, the Tally one, and it, it destroyed the paintwork. Um, it kind of melted itself into the paint. So you have to be a little bit careful with that. I've seen it with something. Um, and then we've got some copper wire here, which is really nice, forms nice and easy. And then another piece there, which is obviously shorter and, and finer. So, uh, yeah, all very, very nice. So much better than having the string you normally get. And then we've got a interior painting color guide here. Um, so we've got, sorry about the glare guys, not much I can do about that, I'm afraid. Um, so yeah, it's telling you, we've got information here for the shells. And then it's telling you what covers colors here. It's all in that mode by Meg, unfortunately. You have to do a cross referencing, but I mean, this is going to be off white, um, German grey, I should think, and red oxide. So it's uh, it's going to be pretty straightforward. And then you've got the um, same there going over, and it'll tell you the color for the periscopes and everything on the top of the hull. And then we've got the engine here, obviously, as you can see. And then we've got the call outs for the turret. Nice CAD images, and then we've got ads for uh, that's what I want that one there. But I'm waiting for it to come out at a reasonable price on Amazon. It's like £59, but then it's £12 or £15 delivery. Uh, they're not paying that for it. Um, but uh, if um, if Darren is correct, Darren Hedges, then um, I'm, I'm going to wait for the uh, Ryfield. I've never built a Ryfield kit, but from what he tells me, it sounds like they're a dream come true. So yeah, and then there's the um, SD uh, Panther, and you get a bonus transparent hull if you buy that one. So, yeah, I'm just looking at that one. It looks like that hasn't got the zimmeret, so that's the SD without zimmeret. So, and maybe someone else can tell what this is all about, this T-Rex. Designed by T-Rex Studio in China, and then they've got the other one, the Cranes by Jason or something. So let's get a quick look at these instructions then. Um, Conscious, this has gone on for, for ages. Um, that's a word or something. Um, so we've got some history of the uh, Panther tank there. If you want to pause it and have a read, you can. And then uh, the usual sort of health and safety. And then we've got a massive sprue call out, which is tiny. Uh, so we're into building up the hull here, putting in the conduit, putting in the cross members, gearbox assembly, put the side plates on, these are the supports for the um, for the uh, torsion bars, and then we've got the torsion bars gone into the sides there, where are they putting them? That's a bit funny, obviously they're telling you to put the torsion bars in there and then assemble it, so I thought they'd suddenly appear. Um, and then we've got the uh, 
the um, swinging arms going on, the suspension arms, and then we've got the multitude of wheels, eight of those, eight of those. So we have millions of wheels. Driver's seat, some shells, here we go, that's the start of something big. And we've got some uh, shell boxes there, have a look at it. Driver's um, gauges, and then, or is that battery boxes there? Because they're going back here. Um, and then there's some more driver's seat going in, some shells going in. And then we've got uh, another seat going in there, by the look of it. And more detail going in around the sides. It's just going to be loads and loads of detail going in. I mean, you can see for yourself, you've got a bulkhead going in there. And then we've got the uh, drive shafts coming through the middle. And then you've got the power takeoff for the turret. Um, then we're building up some shell boxes there. That's those ones with that leather look, or vinyl look bottom on it. Wouldn't have been vinyl, would it, in those days? Um, and then we're adding all those shell cases to the inside of the tank. Then we're doing our sprockets. And oh, I see. This is that's clever. So what you do with those um, with those guide horns, you leave them on the sprue. You cut the sprue off, and then you glue them on the on the track before you take the before you take them off the sprue. That's a really good idea. So um, that's not so bad after all. Um, I'd probably still use fools though. Or whatever, somebody will tell me there's something better out there I expect. So we've got our master, or our master club tracks. We've got master club tracks on the mine. Um, tracks going on here. Oh no, I don't want to use those. And then we're going to start on the engine assembly, which is lovely, lovely little um, model all to itself by the look of it. I'm guessing you could sort of close all the covers up and leave the engine out on the side if you wanted to. I don't know if it comes with a stand, we'll see now. Um, so we've got our exhaust going on there, is that all air intake? And then we've got our um, inlet manifold on the top. Adding some more pipe work to the engine, then dropping the engine in the back. Adding the uh, coolant hoses. And then what we're doing here, we're putting some more internal parts in. Then we're building up those um, the sides of the hole there, and then more and more going inside. It's never ending. It's just never ending what you're putting inside this tank, which you get to the turret, and then uh, more and more stuff going in here, building up the uh, rear rear panel there. I would have thought they would have been. You would have used the. Um, the um, Zimmer covered ones are those. And then engine covers going on here. This is the fan covers. Put it on the driver's hatch and everything on the front. And then doing the engine cover, adding the photo etch to the engine grills there. And then we're building up. That's the uh, container for the um, barrel cleaning rods, I'm guessing. There's some rope on the side, some more rope. More rope, and then working onto the inside of the turret there, adding in some periscopes. Uh, what's this here? This is um, that's a driver's control electrical box, isn't it? Hanging down off the roof there. This is, I think, this has actually got more detail in it than the uh, one of the 16 skull Tammy um, trumpeter ones. Um, very, very nice, very, very nice. Yeah, they were side armor that I saw there with the thinned out edges. Here we go, let's get the turret, so this is going to be mega. Um, adding bits to the inside the turret, then building up the cupola. So we've got a different, so you've got the choice of C or D. You see what I'm saying, they don't tell you which is which. So you've got to work that out for yourself. Um, I'm going to have a page, a list of page there. And then we're adding the uh, seats and everything to the turret. And then we're adding the, the turning mechanism. Start to work on the breech. On the mantlet, should I say, sorry. Then we get the breech built up and put it to the back of the mantlet. Then we're on the floor of the turret here. Another seat there. Some sort of box. And then finishing off the turret. Oh, there's that um, piece of flexible vinyl. So that is, what is that? Is that an air intake? What's an air intake, is it? I guess that's to blow the um, air out of the turret from after the uh, gun blast. And then putting the turret on, 
with that ring in there and everything and I think that's it job done and there you go there's your you've got four options so you've got this one here which is uh, third company 39th Panzer Regiment Marais Le Comp and then we've got the 16th Panzer Division Calamia Autumn 44 that one's November 44 and then we've got this one here which is 16th Panzer Division Calamia Autumn 44 that's the same as that one and then this one here is also Autumn 44 so those three are from the same period of time this one's from November um, that side armour looks bloody horrible, doesn't it? Looks like he's just had a trip to Ikea. Um, yeah. So um, so there we have it. So guys, sorry, there was another coughing fit there. So um, yeah, there it is as it comes with the um, as it comes in the uh, in the crane kit. How many? Sixty three steps in. What was that? How many pages? Oh, it's only thirty two pages. So almost as well, almost as many sprues as there are pages in the manual. There you go. So there we go. Um, that's the kit. Very very nice, except for the tracks. And um, that side armor looks awful. Um, but I'm guessing you can build it without that. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. If you like what you see, please subscribe. Please like. If you give me a dislike, please tell me why. Um, if you dislike this kit, please don't give me a dislike because it's not my fault. Um, so um, yeah, I'll see you all again soon. Bye bye.